glad you're here. This is Job Club, and uh, our agenda is to uh, uh, provide all the things I mentioned earlier, success stories, our main speaker. We're going to share active job leads, partner updates, and next time at Job Club. We always like to remember uh, our mission. Uh, we're dedicated to that, and it's to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network, and learn best practices for the job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find the schedule on topics at www.uk, and that's on your screen. <laughs> that, that, that sort of went away too. Uh, we're having some difficulties here. All right, so um, meet our job club facilitators. I'm Diana Doggett. Again, the um, Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Agent at the Fayette County Extension Office, we have Caroline Francis, uh, Director of Alumni Career Services, and you'll be hearing from her a little later today. Amanda Shagney is the Assistant Director of Alumni Career Services, and Nicole Waite is our Employment Specialist at UK Steps. And um, we also want to recognize Suzanne Smith and Sonny Saylor at the Fayette County Extension Office, as well as Ellie Goodman and Grace Herring. Um, they are always in, our, in helping us and assisting us and a part of our team. Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. And that means that again, as I mentioned, we have in-person audience here at the Fayette County Office. And we are also uh, presenting this presentation through Zoom webinar. And uh, the chat moderator is online and available for you to uh, give your comment, to pose a question, and uh, it will also be our source of relaying information to you. Uh, so watch that chat box so that we can, um, can give you any anything that might be important uh, for later use in the week. We're also uh, available through Facebook Live streaming. And this is view only, no chat moderator or job lead newsletter with that because there's no registration, but it is available and we encourage you to, um, to join us that way as well. We want you to remember that we have free job club resource and they are available in a packet uh, on, in, on our website, which is at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. And you're going to find uh, an array of resources there, um, Central Kentucky networking opportunities, informational uh, interview tips. We have articles of interest for job seekers, LinkedIn job uh, search checklist. And so just check that out uh, before and after we meet today and uh, before we meet next time. And I think you will find a great uh, source of information as you continue your job search. We wanna remind you to join the Central Kentucky Job Club Sharing Community on LinkedIn. And uh, that's a, an opportunity for you to learn about new job leads um, in the interim between our job club sessions. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. In-person employee guests may have a one-minute spotlight to share active job leads with the group later in the program. We want you to watch your email later today for job leads that have been sent and shared with us, uh, the Job Club team. So that will be coming to you later on this afternoon, those Zoom webinar registries. Some attendees are conducting a confidential job search. So let's please be respectful of privacy for the job search of others. Check out job search related articles included in our job club reminder emails. Recordings and PowerPoint slides are also available at our website. We wanna welcome our first timers. We're excited about that. Um, we will remind you that you will receive a follow-up survey later today. And this feedback will place you in our notification system for future programs. So we want you to, if you're virtual, we want you to scan the QR code below to complete now so that we can hook up with you later and make sure that uh, you will be in our system for notification. Do we have any first timers in person here today? Well, great, we do. We have, uh, so you want to introduce yourself? That'd be great.
Great. Welcome. Wonderful. So total example of job seeker and job recruiter, and that's um, that's what makes job clubs so very valuable to our community. So a big welcome. And again, we, we hope that you'll uh, fill out our survey for later information. Now we want to turn to success stories. And this is, uh, this is what really keeps us going when we get feedback from job club participants. And it doesn't always mean that you have um, secured, landed the job, although that's exciting and we definitely want you to share that with us. But job club success means that you probably have done something in the last two weeks that has forwarded you uh, your probability of getting a job. So that means uh, writing a resume or reviewing your resume, or perhaps you have networked with someone that you have previously worked with uh, in, in other times. It could be that you have joined LinkedIn, or maybe you have um, revisited your profile and improved it. So do we have any success stories? Interviews are definitely something that we would want to know if you've had an interview or you have um, had uh, have an upcoming interview. And if you're in our virtual audience, we'd love for you to state that in the state in the chat box so that we can see what you're doing there as well. I, do. Okay. I, have, I have a job offer on the table. I hopefully will be accepting it today. So <gasps> have one little negotiation and then hopefully that'll be it. So I really appreciate yeah. the support. Thank you. So in two weeks, there's a real possibility we might be uh, moving your success story on up to another level. We'll, we actually await that and we we're hopeful. Well, that's great news. Uh, I just used the tips that we got um, in LinkedIn to kind of revamp my LinkedIn because that was so helpful and also put the new, uh, much better profile picture that we all took here. So thank you. Excellent. Excellent. And I think you will find that each and every um, presentation at Job Club. You know, there are takeaways, and when you, when you do that, we just love to hear back on how useful it was. It's just real important to us so that we know how to prepare future schedules. Are there any on, online? So keep that in mind, and we will want you to definitely share. I do have a success story that does mean that this, per, this particular attendee has secured employment. I just wanted to reach out to say that I cannot attend the meeting tomorrow. However, I did accept a temporary job that I found out about through Job Club. I received a job through UK Steps as a data analyst working on COVID-19 test and vaccine data for the university. Thank you, Parker Watts. So let's give Parker a round of applause. We're excited about that. And uh, that's, again, just makes our day and even brighter today to know that he is uh, starting his new job today. So we're going to begin our session now, and we regret that our scheduled speaker, Jennifer Duncan from the University of Colorado, uh, Boulder, uh, she is unable to join us today for personal reasons and however Job Club is equipped to carry on as always and our own Caroline Francis is stepping in to present how to write a job winning resume. Caroline is director of the University of Kentucky Alumni Career Services Program and a certified professional retirement coach, certified career counselor, certified career services provider, global career development facilitator, and board certified coach with over 20 years of experience working with adults in all stages of career transition. In her career services role at the University of Kentucky, she assists individual clients, she develops career related programming and writes regular columns for the UK Alumni Magazine. In 2000, 20, 
2013, she co-founded the Central Kentucky Job Club, which is still going strong. Caroline has an EDS, an MS, and a BBA from the University of Kentucky and is a proud life member of the UK Alumni Association. Welcome, Caroline, although you need very little welcome, but we're so glad you're filling in today. Thank you. I have never seen anything like the economy in the 30 years that I have been a career counselor. It is a great time to be job seeking. So I really want to encourage you to dust off that resume, polish it up, and consider testing the market right now. Uh, if you're job seeking, um, continue to work hard and submit those applications. Don't give up. We have success stories here today in our audience of people that have found things on LinkedIn and Indeed, as well as through their personal network. If you're in a position where perhaps you're underemployed or maybe not quite 100% happy, then by all means, please brush up your resume and start to test the market and see if there's something out there that might be a better fit for you. Ideally, we should all be updating our resume at least twice a year. So if you go to get your teeth cleaned twice a year, make a mental note, update my resume at the same time. We're hearing from clients and former job club attendees that perhaps came through our doors eight years ago. They're ready to look for their next opportunity and they're sending us their resumes that are a little dated and, and they've not been including bullets of what awesome accomplishments they've been uh, achieving in their most recent positions. So this is a real um, challenge for you to update your resume uh, because it is a really good time to be job seeking right now. We do get some bloopers in the job search world that make a little humor to our position. Uh, some of the bloopers that have been on resumes that we've heard about is an applicant wrote whorehouse instead of warehouse worker um, on their resume. And um, hopefully you have people looking for typos such as this um, so that you will not submit this faux pas on your resume to an employer and be the humor of the hiring committee. Um, also, we've had heard of... Uh, applicants, not here, of course, these have been on blogs and whatnot that we've uh, subscribed to, that they worked in a jail when they were actually serving a little time, so that's creative. Um, applicants applied for a driver position and claimed that they had 10 years of experience when, if you did the math, they really had not been driving that long, legally at least. <laughs> um, Someone said they had a career break in 2014 to renovate their horse. And I think they meant their house. Also, a woman sent her resume and cover letter um, before deleting some of the feedback that they'd received that said, you may not want to include that on your resume. So as you can see, there's lots of situations where we get in a hurry or we try to meet that midnight deadline and our resume was not fine tuned and polished. So always be ready to go with your resume. And if you do it when you get your teeth cleaned, that will make the process a whole lot easier. Resumes need to be tailored. Every resume needs to be tailored to the job of the hour. And we know that takes time. But that's how people land jobs, by making their resume targeted. It's a marketing piece. As of now, there's hardly a job that someone will get without a resume. It might be a formality on the end if you have a connection or a strong network on the inside pulling for you, but they will ask for your resume. Uh, at some point down the road, people might use LinkedIn and skip the resume process, but for now, all job seekers do need an active, up-to-date resume. It's your self-marketing tool. Two types of resumes that we're going to talk about today. The chronological, which is the most common, and it takes your work experience in reverse chronological order. 
The other type is the functional or the skills-based resume. And there are certain situations where that will certainly be to your advantage. A chronological resume is what employers prefer. Uh, again, it starts with your most recent position and goes backwards. The functional resume, though, is more skills-based. And this is a good type of a resume alternative to use for someone that perhaps is changing careers and you're getting pigeonholed into something you've done in the past. We always wanna make it easy for the employers to see that you have the relevant skills that they're seeking. We get, for example, a lot of clients that maybe have been in teaching or they've been a nurse or they've been in a certain type of field for maybe 15, 20 years of their career and they're now ready to do something totally different. But if they submit a chronological resume with all of their teaching experience, for example, for something that's totally different, an employer's going to have a hard time making that link and seeing the relevant skill set. So we always need to help them out and help them at a quick, quick glance be able to see, ah, this person has some transferable skills that we will need in this position. Also, this type of a resume is helpful if someone has perhaps a gap in their work history or maybe they're transitioning from military work experience to civilian work experience. So there are times when it will be the benefit of the job seeker to use a functional skills-based resume. Through the years, I've had clients that have said, I have not gotten a bite on my resume and I've been sending my resume out for six months. And if we switch to a functional or a skills-based resume, all of a sudden they start getting some response from their resume. So keep that in mind, depending upon your situation. Let's talk a little bit about modernizing your resume. If it's been a little while since you've been on the job search or updated your resume, keywords, keywords, keywords are a big takeaway from today. Analyze that job description. Everything in that job description you have done or can do, or if you have the skill or credential that they're looking for, highlight that and make sure it gets in your resume. Also, it wouldn't hurt to put that type of important information in your LinkedIn profile and on the company application if you're required to submit an application. Keep it short. Even if you have a very impressive 20, 30 year work history, it needs to be no more than two pages. This shows the employer you're respectful of their time and that you can highlight what they need to do. So no more than two pages, very few exceptions on that. Academic VITAs or CVs would be an exception. Perhaps some government type work uh, would potentially be an, a, an exception, but otherwise we all need to get it down to two pages. Resumes are designed to be read at a quick glance. Surveys will show that employers and HR specialists are only going to give your resume about a six second glance when they're doing the initial screening. So make sure it's easily laid out so that someone could catch the highlights of the information at a very quick glance. We'll get into a little more of these details in a minute, uh, but let's talk about some resources for you. Keywords, as we've mentioned, are extremely important. There's a couple of resources that we wanna to draw to your attention that'll help you make sure that you can get through applicant tracking systems, better known as ATSs. These are the computer systems that employers use to scan resumes. And if you have the relevant keywords, you're more likely going to be passed on to the next step in the process. Jobscan.co and tagcrowd.com are excellent free resources to help you with that process, to kind of play that game of being more likely to get to the next, next step. So here's an example using the Tag Crowd resource. Um, 
For this fictitious job, uh, manager manufacturing operations, uh, we put the job description in this system in the box. And here's a word cloud of the words that seem to be most important or stand out. So words such as manufacturing, production, team, leaders, that's a clue to you that these words need to be in your resume to help you go through the applicant tracking system. Tag Crowd is a great resource. Have fun experimenting with that. Job Scan also, you can put your resume in the Job Scan um, boxes and it will let you know what percentage based on relevant words and experience it appears that you have in line with what the job description is seeking. So that'll give you an idea, is it really worth my time applying? In past more tighter job markets, unless you had at least 80% of what the job description required, I would encourage clients not to waste a whole lot of their time uh, applying. That's a little different for this moment in time. At this moment in time, it is a job seekers market. Employers are having a really hard time getting a strong candidate pool. We're hearing stories of people that in the past maybe have had 30 or 40 good candidates for an opening with their company. Now they're maybe getting five, 10. So it is a really good time for you to if you don't have a whole lot of what they're looking for and you're still very interested and can show you have relevant skills, go ahead and apply. I encourage you to apply just to help the employer be able to see those transferable skills. Maybe even in the cover letter address a little more, um, talk about your passion for what they do, the company, the industry, perhaps even someone in your network um, can pull for you from the inside. Let's start at the very top of the resume and work our way down. I'm going to briefly address each section at the top of the, starting at the top and give you some tips. These are things that we often um, comment or correct uh, for clients when we're reviewing their resumes. Also during the presentation for our online audience, please use the chat box to ask questions. Happy to address questions. Some of them we might be covering later in the presentation, uh, but Amanda will be moderating the chat box. So send those questions on through your burning resume questions. At the top of the information, uh, top of the resume, you simply need your name, your location, city, states, plenty, or your target job search location, email and phone number and LinkedIn URL. Be sure to hyperlink your email and your LinkedIn URL. You no longer need a home mailing address. No one's going to mail you anything. Uh, that's plenty of information at the top of the resume. Also, your name needs to be the very first thing at the top of the resume. We see some resumes where people use formatters that they get online, and it might have some pretty boxes and design those are not encouraged. HR professionals will tell you those tend to have scanning issues. Uh, they don't scan well. Shading, highlighting sometimes in those formatters uh, just doesn't come through the system well. So plain vanilla Word document is always good on a resume, but put, the, put your name at the top, first piece of information. If you're conducting a job search for a, a city that you do not currently live in, I encourage you to put your target location on the resume. Uh, we do hear that sometimes people get some response once they put their target location if they're doing an out of state job search. Um, so that's certainly something that you can uh, use as a strategy to help you if you're looking for an out of state position. We have an example listed on the slide of how that section should look. Next is your profile or your summary section. If you're still using an objective that's outdated, take that objective off. The employer 
really doesn't care about what we want, we need to always make sure that we are addressing the employer needs. I'm going to pause here a moment. We've had a couple of questions come in. Amanda, why don't you take those for us? Okay, uh, Laura has a question in the chat. Do Word resume templates work okay with scanning software? Yes, they do. HR professionals, employers tell us simple Word is actually what they prefer. I would be wary of using the template in there because your resume will look exactly like a competitor. We see a whole lot of those templates in our work. Yeah, avoid templates. Um, Regina is asking, I've heard if you list a hot mail address, it will automatically age you. Your resume may be thrown out. Can you respond to that? Yes, you have heard correctly. If you're still using your Hotmail, your AOL accounts, eh, those need to go. Update it to a Gmail, an iCloud, something more modern. Uh, we want to do anything possible to avoid ageism or looking like we're not with the latest technology. So definitely eliminate Hotmail, um, AOL, older email service provider type accounts. Good questions. So the next section is that profile or summary section. Just above that, uh, we encourage you to put the target job title, um, center it below your contact information, whatever your target job is you're applying for, this is where you tailor it. Be sure remember to tailor it for each job and not put the last job that you applied for with this resume on there. Tailor it, if you're not exactly sure, if there's not an opening, it's fine to, to put two or three loosely related job titles, perhaps with a symbol between um, two or three of those loosely related titles. If you're perhaps sending in a blind resume when there's not a specific uh, opening or if it's a networking situation. In that profile or summary section, this is your 30 second commercial. If somebody is not going to read or remember anything else about you, what are your golden nuggets? What do you want that employer to know that's relevant to the job? Um, what have you done that is so similar to this position that will prove you can hit the ground running? What are some of the key credentials you have that they are looking for? A couple of trigger questions. I always ask my clients, what are you known for? So take a few moments when you're putting together your profile. What are you known for? What are you the go-to person for? What do you have a track record of? Are there themes from some of your last jobs? Are you the person brought into blank? What have you been recognized for? Those would be relevant things to include. This could be a short paragraph. It could be um, bulleted. It could be a combination. It could be two or three sentences and then some key words. Uh, keeping in mind what the job description called for. Sometimes with that six second glance, HR professionals really don't look below that in the initial screening. So put your golden nuggets at the top, load heavy at the top on that prime real estate there. Uh, we have a couple of examples here of formatting um, for that professional or profile, uh, starting with the job title and just a couple of examples of how to lay that out. There is one book we recommend always to our clients that's an excellent book. I know when we're writing our own resume, it's so hard to see what we're good at. It's hard to emotionally remove ourselves from, from this process. There's a great book called Expert Resumes for Managers, Expert Resumes and LinkedIn Profiles for Managers by Enalo and Kursmark. It is full of great examples. Uh, the Formatting in the book is a little too fancy, but the wording, it gives you fabulous examples of wording um, that'll help you think more creatively in how I need to be marketing and selling my skills and relevant experience. For your professional experience, that's the next section. We used to call that work experience. That's an outdated section header. Now we call it professional experience. This is where you wanna use bullets. No paragraphs in this section. 
Remember, resumes are written for scanners. Uh, begin those statements with action verbs. Launched, collaborated, audited, conducted, facilitated, advised, trained. Those type of words are what you want to begin your bullets with. A much stronger start. We don't want to see on your resume responsibilities included. What are three to five things in each of your jobs that you're most proud of accomplishing? Pulling out the ones that are relevant for the job of the hour. That's what employers want to see. Also, metrics, dollars, numbers, percentage. Uh, what metrics can you include that'll put it in perspective? I always, when I read the bullets, I read to myself, read the bullet and then say, what did that result in? Why was that important? And if you can add a little more to the bullet, it'll make it much stronger. I think we have a question or so that's come in. Alicia's asking, um, when listing skills in the summary section, tables or columns impact scanning? We have heard they will. So leave off tables and columns in your resume. They do not scan well. And then another question that came through that I responded to and wanted to share with the group, um, would you use a college email address or get a Gmail account? We do recommend that you get your own personal email. And if you're using a university email, especially if you are went to a public university, that email address is subject to open records requests. So if you want a private email address, you need to set it up in Gmail or iCloud. Also, they expire when you graduate. So great questions. Thank you for sending those in. In our welcome packet, we do have a list of some really good um, words, verbs that you can begin your bullets with. So we'll hope you'll reference those. And also, if you just Google on the internet, resume verbs, you'll be able to get some great list as well. Resume boosters. These are some of the things to ask yourself about each of your jobs. Start just a blank Word document and look back over your last three or four jobs and ask yourself some of these trigger type questions. What problems did I solve? Uh, did I increase or generate anything new? Um, did I save the company some money? Did I bring in new business? Did I win an award or did I get a new certificate? What are some of the things that were perhaps on, written on your annual review? These are things that could be really wonderful accomplishments to include in your resume. A couple of options here that we want to show you are sample formatting for unusual situations. For a traditional resume, it's sometimes helpful to put a tagline under your current employer, a one-line sentence that would give an overview of the scope of your experience before you go into your bullets and your accomplishments. Uh, but sample formatting, begin with the company name on the top line, the city state, on the right margin, the dates of your service. Then go to your next job for the chronological resume and the job before that. This situation comes up from time to time. Let's say you've worked with the same company, but you've had multiple positions within the same company. In that situation, there's no need to relist the company name every single time you have listed the job entry. Just list the company name one time and put your dates of entire service on that top line right margin. Then for each position, you put the date you were in that job right next to the job title going into your bullets and then the position before that. Uh, for however many positions you had within the company. Here's sample formatting of a functional or a skills-based resume. You still would use the profile or the summary section at the top, just like you would for a chronological resume. That's your 30-second commercial, your executive summary that helps the employer at a quick glance see what's most relevant uh, golden nuggets you have for that target job. But then in studying the job description, what are three or four things that it seems that employer would really need this candidate to have? For this fictitious example, 
Uh, they needed someone that had some project management experience, some sales and marketing, and some cost reduction or avoidance experience. Those then become section headers. And you can pull from anywhere in your work history or volunteer history examples that would support you using that transferable skill. We do have a few questions at this point. Let's, let's address those. Joshua's got a great question in the chat here. How do you jazz up bullet points if your profession focuses more on day-to-day -day activities rather than metrics? It might be hard to quantify those because your project doesn't end, say, in a week or a year. What would you recommend? Excellent question. Some jobs are a little easier to put metrics to than others. But if a company is has you on their, on their payroll, there's a reason you are working for that company. So what is it that you do that brings value to that company? And just describe it the best you can in the value you bring to the company. Next question, any others? Excellent. So in the functional example here, after you list three or four sections of transferable skills with support, then at the bottom, you simply have one liners of where you've worked and when where it doesn't focus so much on positions that aren't as relevant to the target job, but focuses more on those transferable skills. Uh, we always encourage you to have a, an ongoing list of what are my top 10 transferable skills. We're gonna have lots of jobs in our work history, lots of different careers. So being able to verbalize our strengths as well as our transferable skills is just a good life skill to have. Another situation here is let's say there was something you did earlier in your career that's relevant to your current job search, but it might have been 10, 15, 20 years ago. And perhaps that is so long ago, it, it's not on, it would not have been on your traditional resume. A resume is really a snapshot of our most recent and or relevant 10 or 15 years of experience. So let's say you did something 15 years ago and now you wanna do something in that type of work again. So here's a strategy to bring that up to the top of the resume, showcase that experience. So where you would traditionally start off with professional experience, change the section header to relevant professional experience. That's helping the employer out. It's helping them where they don't have to dig to see why did this person apply and find it on page two. We want to pull up to the top that I worked for a very similar company. I did this type of work earlier in my career. So move that up and call that section relevant professional experience, and then have a section below that additional professional experience that's more chronological after you address the relevant first. Next, you're going to have an education section, whether you use a chronological or a functional, an education section. You can even call that education and professional development. Include your school, relevant degree, uh, certifications, no years. Especially if you've been out of school more than a couple of years, drop the years, only list where you received your education, credentials, or training. Other sections that you might want to include on a resume uh, would be community engagement, which we used to call that volunteer work. But if you've been involved in your community, Chances are your leadership roles and things that you've done for nonprofits and in your community are very transferable skills. Uh, we've worked with many people in the past that what they've done for nonprofits, the nonprofit would have had to have paid somebody to do. So if you've helped with social media or fundraising or accounting, anything that you may have done in a volunteer capacity that would show transferable business skills, definitely include that on a resume. Um, don't be shy. 
This is your self-marketing tool. You have to sell yourself. Um, your mother's no longer there to do that for you. It's your responsibility to be proactive in your career management and sell your stuff and let people know the good things that you've done. Uh, other sections you may include would be relevant certifications or training, uh, computer skills, if it's relevant for the job of the hour, uh, professional affiliations. Do you belong to your industry's professional affiliation? Do you have leadership roles uh, in your industry professional affiliations? Um, these are all good sections to potentially include uh, if it shows um, strength to your application. Some of these we've already mentioned to avoid on your resume, but we do not want to see templates um, for lots of reasons. Uh, eliminate that objective statement that's outdated. Uh, please do not list personal pronouns. I, my, do not list my responsibilities included. Uh, take the top three to five things you're most proud of in each of your positions that are relevant those should become your bullets, not what you did more on the day-to-day -day basis. Uh, these are just a few of the things we've referenced, most of those. Also, do not put references available upon request. Uh, that's obvious. Save that space. Use it to sell yourself with another one of your awesome marketable skills. Any questions at this point? We've got some. We do, we have a, an online question from Alicia. What do you recommend for education that you haven't finished? Say I have credits toward a degree, but wasn't able to finish and those credits are relevant to the position. Okay, thank you, good question. If you are working toward a degree or certification, I would certainly include that, but so that it's not misrepresented, I would put in parentheses that you have perhaps 23 hours toward that credential or certification or list some of the relevant courses and maybe an expected completion date. Men, um, two more. Can you specify remote work preferred on your document? Oh, yes, good idea. I would include remote work uh, in the top section of your resume, somewhere in that profile or summary and or in the cover letter. Um, and also when you're searching online, uh, indeed LinkedIn, use that as one of your keywords when you're conducting um, searches. More and more of those. Also, I would use the words hybrid if you're willing to work you know, part remote, part in person. Uh, use hybrid in your search as well. Let's talk a teeny bit about cover letters. They are very important. Uh, we get a lot of people ask us, do I have to include across a cover letter? No, you don't have to, but I'd highly recommend it. It's a little more work, but you do need to tailor it. Where the cover letter especially is important is if you have been narrowed down in the search to perhaps the five or six people they wanna do it, uh, an early screening with, if you do not have a cover letter and we're given the option to include it, it, it makes you look bad. Um, the people that have a cover letter, there's things you can say in that cover letter that you can't really put in resumes. Uh, so use that to your advantage, that cover letter. It does need to be tailored to each position. Typically in the first paragraph, what you are applying for, how you heard about it. Name drop if you can. Next, in the body or the middle part of the cover letter, take two or three of the key things they were asking for in that job description and address how you have that experience. Now, maybe you've worked at a competitor. Um, maybe you have a class or some training, some volunteer work. What have you done that will get, your, get their attention? Lastly, some form of a nicety. Why do you wanna work there? What about this company is of interest to you? Is it their mission, their culture? Um, so that's a cover letter um, overview. Um, these are some resources that you can find in the Job Club Welcome Packet, a resume checklist. Um, we also wanna share with you a couple of final tips. 
when you're tailoring that resume, uh, remember that it's only going to get about a six or seven second glance. So it's your marketing tool. If you take your resume and use the tips that we have just presented, your resume will be much stronger. Regularly update it. Remember when you get your teeth cleaned, it's time to update your resume. Not at 11 o'clock when you're trying to meet that 12 o'clock deadline for a job that fell in your lap. Double, triple check. We don't wanna pull something from your resume for our bloopers next time we present this presentation. So have two or three people look at it and make sure that there's no typos or errors that get through. Uh, when we look at it, it, it all looks the same after a while. So have a fresh set of eyes to take a look at that. Uh, we also encourage you to save your resume as a PDF before sending it to employers. And there's some mixed opinions on that. Um, but just to be safe, go ahead and save it as a PDF. Sometimes things move around when they're opened on the other end, and you may have things where you didn't think they were. Additional tips, Amanda. I um, just want to pass a question from the chat. Um, Eric's asking, is a PDF or Word document better to submit in your opinion? We, we get mixed reviews on that. I'm leaning a little toward PDF, uh, but I, if, if it's in doubt, I would email the company and ask them what they prefer. Some companies prefer Word, some prefer PDF. Um, if we get a mixed bag on what employers tell us they want on that. I'll add, I think applicant tracking systems have become more robust in the last several years, mm -hmm. and they should be able to scan either of those types of documents. But if your formatting is what you're worried about, some of those applicant tracking systems will force a one inch margin, margin on your document. If you want it to print the way that you view it, PDF is the safest way to go. Definitely. Great questions. Thank you all very much. I want to share that UK Alumni Career Services, Amanda Shagney and I are certified professional uh, career counselors. Anyone can join the UK Alumni Association and a benefit of membership is two individual career counseling sessions with us, either in person or Zoom. Uh, so we'd be happy to meet with you individually. Uh, also keep an eye, we do have several career events coming up um, in the next month or so. Many of those are free. This week is Career Management Week. We have some fabulous programs that are free and open to the public. You can go to our website, www.ukalumni.net forward slash career events to register for those. Diana, um, I'm going to flip it over to you now and to share about um, the rest of the program. Thank you, Caroline. Um, hopefully you were making notes. Um, this is, was an excellent presentation. Um, I really like the analogy of reviewing that resume and uh, updating twice a year and don't get caught off guard when you need it. So thanks again, Caroline, for an excellent presentation. We appreciate it so much. Um, now's our time to discuss job leads and um, we would welcome any online employer that would like to either put in the chat box or request a one minute opportunity to describe their job leads, then we would welcome that. And we also have someone in our audience here in person who would like to tell us about job leads. Thank you. Um, so we're located downtown here in Lexington, the Salvation Army at 736 West Main. We are hiring in several positions. And I would say they're all listed on Indeed under the Salvation Army, Lexington, Kentucky. We're very willing to work with student schedules, people who are coming back into the workforce, if you need part-time, full-time, third shift, we have all of the things. So um, we have a childcare center, we need several staff. We have a homeless shelter, we need several staff. So just check us out on Indeed, reach out to me, Jeanette Barrington. I believe my email address is listed on all of those postings. So we would, I'd be happy to meet with anybody that's interested. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do we have any in the chat box? If we do, I'm sure you are. Um, you have those available to review. Is there any request to speak, Amanda? Not today. I do want to remind employers that with active job leads, please make your um, those available by emailing us the job leads by 12 noon today at UK Alumni Career at uky.edu, and we'll include those in our post-meeting job lead list. And now it's time to give some uh, job club facilitator news and program update. I'll begin with cooperative extension. It is fall, um, but just loving, loving that crisp air and, and foliage change. And that means that there's exciting programs at your local extension office. So please check those out on the various websites. I will mention a couple of programs. One is statewide and it's very um, appropriate for this, this weekend. It's the FCS Fall Frolic 5K Weekend. We invite you to do whatever you do. You walk, you run, whatever activity this weekend, beginning at on Friday at 5 p.m. It will end at 11.59 on Sunday, but very appropriately during trick-or-treating or fall activities, festivals. And you do not have to register for this program. You will just share your virtual finish line via social media at the address that I put into the chat box, but it's www.facebook.com slash UKFCSEXT. So that'll be a fun thing to do. Just clock your, your uh, mileage and get that in. And those first 500 to, or 300, I'm sorry, the first 300 finishers will receive a free UK swag. So what fun and get out and be active. And we hope that your family and friends will join us. We also have a program at the Fayette County Extension tomorrow evening, and if you're considering buying some new kitchen gadget, maybe for a friend for the holidays, upcoming holidays, or you just are interested in what's out there, we have an excellent program that's going to feature all sorts of kitchen tools and gadgets, and it will be here at the Fayette County Cooperative Extension office beginning at 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, uh, the 27th, but we'll also provide it virtually. And I have put that address in your chat box as well. So you can join us. And uh, I think it's going to be a very, very fun evening as there'll be lots on display that maybe some you've never even seen before. So check out everything that is, again, happening at your extension offices. We always want to mention that updates from UK Steps is vital in your job search because there are simply so many opportunities at this period of time. Nicole Waite is not with us today, but I can assure you that the list is long. The opportunities are, are very, very uh, great there at UK Steps Temporary Employment. We have that address in your chat box. But go to um, www.uky.edu slash HR and then slash employment slash temporary employment. And you will see a list of jobs uh, that are temporary, but in so many ways can lead to greater opportunities with the University of Kentucky. Uh, Caroline has mentioned just a wonderful opportunity this week with the UK Alumni Career Services Career Management Week. Check out the topics, the programs. There was just so many it, it, opportunities and, and topics that, that sometimes we spread out throughout the year, but it is concentrated in this one week. And it's October the 25th and the 28th. The registration information, again, is in your chat box on our website, so we encourage you to take advantage of those programs. We also want to say that there's a professional development book club opportunity as well, and that information is at the ukalumni.net slash career website. Next time at Job Club, we are looking forward to, again, a couple of our facilitators. Caroline will return with Amanda Chagney. And the topic 
is job search strategies. And there are many, resume being one of them, but they are gonna really narrow down some unique strategies that are needed in that job search. So we are excited that um, we, they will be presenting and we encourage you to register early and join us again on November the 9th, November the 9th. And now it's time for networking locally here at the Extension Office. We hope to hear from our first timers as you filled out your survey and returned it to us today. For those of you that have registered on Zoom webinar, you can look forward to getting our email newsletter later on this afternoon with job leads. And until next time, on behalf of the UK Alumni Career Development Office, UK Steps, Temporary Employment, and the UK Cooperative Extension Service, we wish you well and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.